Today on News Bites, 500K Venezuelans get work permits, Kamala's economic input, and how much is Biden spending on COVID tests? Stick around for these bites and more, all on today's News Bites. Okay, real quick, Biden will provide $600 million to produce 20 million more at-home COVID tests, funding 12 U.S. manufacturers and restarting the website to allow households to order four free tests to be shipped to them. Previous government programs distributed over 750 million free tests. They say they're not anticipating new variants or waves, but just want to be prepared. All right, here's the scoop. Biden grants temporary protected status, TPS, to nearly 500,000 illegal Venezuelans in the U.S., allowing those who crossed into the U.S. before August to avoid deportation and speed the approval of work permits. It's the largest expansion of TPS ever. Roughly 243,000 Venezuelans already have TPS through a previous designation, and the new protection will cover an additional 472,000. The Biden admin claims the move will ease foreign strains on U.S. cities, but others say it actually incentivizes more illegal entries into the country. Okay, check this out. Here's what New York Governor Hochul had to say then versus last night on the border crisis. Watch. We want people to come here despite where they came from or despite the circumstances that drove them to this country and to this, and to this state. We see, say you are welcome here. We are welcome with open arms and we'll work to keep you safe. We'll not only house you, but we'll protect you. So our message to the world is send us your people send us those who need the uh, the cloak of comfort that we can demonstrate as New Yorkers with big hearts and open arms, and we'll provide a safe haven. We have to let the word out that when you come to New York, we're not going to have more hotel rooms. We don't have capacity. So we have to also message properly that we're at our limit. If you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. All right, here's the latest. Rupert Murdoch is retiring from Fox and News Corp boards at the age of 92. He leaves his son, Lachlan, as the sole executor in charge of the global media empire. Rupert will become chairman emeritus and will continue advising Lachlan. He ends an active career building one of the most influential media empires spanning three continents, shaping journalism and politics. Retirement solidifies Lachlan's control ahead of any future family disputes, with each member having an equal vote on the board upon Rupert's passing. All right, in case you missed it, 69 News anchor Wendy Davis interviewed Kamala last night, and here's what she said about the economy. Take a listen. You're touting Bidenomics. They're calling it Bidenflation. Um, what is your take on, on the, if with prices going up? Right. Well, first of all, I think it's important to, to pay attention to the fact that, um, that prices need to come down in a number of areas but we have been lowering the cost of living for so many people. But it's a real issue, and um, and I take it seriously. Okay, the U.S. Senate late last night confirmed General Charles Brown as the next chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the highest-ranking military officer in the U.S. In an 83-11 to 11 vote, it is the first time that both the Secretary of Defense and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs are black. Brown will replace General Milley starting October 1st. He currently serves as the Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force, was commissioned in 1984, and has flown 3,000 hours, yet has only only 130 combat hours over 42 years. The average fighter pilot will fly about 200 hours each year or 350 during deployment. Those are today's bites, which are on our website at disclose.tv. Subscribe, hit that bell, and leave your comments below. We read them.